KFAT Radio, KFAT Lakeside. It's straight up 10 o'clock with Captain Fogel on a beautiful moonlit night. I guess not. Who is it? Your wife? <gasps> Sorry, only kidding. Sorry. That's Skip Thompson's Jeep. And the Mustang belongs to Kevin Matthews. Oh, babe, I don't like this. Let's just keep going. I don't want those kids to see us together. If word ever got that. Hello, I'm talking. Shh. Quiet for just a minute. What's wrong? I don't hear anything. Maybe they're all making out. Like we should be doing. Come on. I'm gonna check this out. What in the hell? <laughs> Shit, you guys. Scare you? Hey, man. Hey, Dave, we didn't mean to scare you that much. Yeah, sorry about that. Sally Jean? Hey, what are you guys doing out here anyway? Maybe I ought to ask you the same thing. Beginning of a four-day weekend, Dave. Besides, we're just practicing for Liz's horror video that she's going to make. Dave, I think we should just go. Officer Thomas was kind enough to take me back to the town. My car got stuck out here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys haven't been drinking, have you? No. Uh, no. <clears throat> Dave, let's just go. Right. Don't stay out too late. And Liz, don't mention this to anyone, okay? Hey, uh, hey, don't you stay out too late. <laughs> <laughs> Sally off a Dave with a crowbar. Oh, man, you should have seen her little boob shimmy when she hit the windshield. <laughs> she could have a little class for a change. Yeah, besides those ladies present. Tell us, Miss Director, did we pass the audition? <laughs> It's too creepy out here. Let's get back to town, okay? Good idea. Guys, come on. We got plenty of beer. Nice warm night. Don't chicken out now. <laughs> we got all night. School's out. Time for staying. Count me in. I got an idea. I bet Dave and that Sally Jean are parked just down the road making out. We could sneak up on them. I got an idea. I think once tonight is enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'll see you.
An obstinate old fart. Always has been. He's just a little headstrong, Tom, that's all. Harold, I've already made two offers on that property, and the son of a gun's rejected both of them. I know, Tom, I know. You've been very patient. But you know, it ain't been easy for me either. Les Baker and I have been friends 30 years. I've spent a great deal of my career looking after his meat packing plant until it closed down eight years ago. 
Hey, you're forgetting I put in a couple years there myself. I know you have, I know. Well, as his friend and attorney, I suggest you persuade him to accept my final offer. Otherwise, the county's going to put it up for auction and he's going to lose it all. We will lose it all. Bonnie, I'm going over to Lakeside on business. I'll be back about noon. Okay, Mr. S. Morning, Sheriff. You know, you're not a bad kid, Skip, but someday I'm going to be scraping you off the highway. Gotta take care of number one. Everybody else is number two. So let's just say I'm helping myself, you and old Les Bacon, by doing this. No, that's just ain't good business. The last thing I need is an old fart. Oh, no offense, Harold. Well, hell, you know what I mean. It would make it a hell of a lot easier just to let the county foreclose on the property and buy from them. No strings attached. You got a light. Yeah, if you don't call me old fart no more. It's 9 o'clock and time for the National Hog Report. Good news for hog raisers. The price per pound hanging weight has risen by 5 cents to a record high of 95 cents. A welcome relief just one year ago when low pork prices almost bankrupted many of the nation's pork raisers. H.C. Hog Rally, president of the Southwest Pork Raisers Association, stated that it shows that the free enterprise system works without the need for federal subsidies. And now for the weather. A rapidly approaching storm front promises warm showers and some magnificent lightning displays tonight. Hey, all you K-Fatsos, the K-Fat Jocks hope you can join us tonight for our annual K-Fat Big Out. Tonight, yours truly, Captain Poker, will meet you at the VFW Hall for a big all-out dance and big out. All weekend long, K-Fat Jocks will play music recorded by local groups throughout the county. You can hear some of the best, best their way to glory at the big K-Fat Big Out. Doors open at 7.30, no booze or you lose. Be there.
Apparently it'll get worse. Lester? Lester! Lester? Good morning, Lester. Sheriff. Lester, Tom Sanford and I have been talking. He'd like to make you a new offer. Final offer. I'll give you $55,000 for the property. You can stay here. And uh, work for me as my consultant. And the slaughterhouse? Well, it's too far gone to be useful for anything with storage. Now it'll be torn down, replaced by a modern plant. Need more than 100 new jobs to the community, Lester. You can be part of it. And it'll get the county assessor off your back. Carol, you've been my advisor for many years. You helped me start my meat business. We watched it grow. We watched it die. I told you to mechanize, Lester, mechanize. But you wouldn't listen to me. Even old Tom Sanford saw it coming. When it died, you were the one that advised me to convert the citrus packing. You, Harold. People always drink orange juice for breakfast, you said. But they can't always afford a steak dinner. And it would have worked, too, if you'd have put your heart into it. Look at these. These aren't the hands of an orange picker. These are the hands of a skilled butcher. I've spent my life preparing the choicest cuts of meat, the finest sausages. And we did it all with the skill of craftsmen and sharp knives, not sinew-chewing chainsaws. I don't have to listen to this man yet. Wait, Tom. Oh, forget it. It's over. Just let the county take the property. You're being pig-headed, Lester. You young hot dogs are all alike. You know, Sanford, I could do with 20 good men what you have to do with 100. Now just hold on, And Lester. I'd never allow 30% you're an old fool, Lester. Thirty percent fat, Harold. Men like him are clogging up our young people's arteries. Lester, it's my duty to inform you that the county assessor's office hereby forecloses on your property to be sold at public auction. You have 30 days to leave the premises. I'm sorry. No one's kicking me off this here property. Not the law, no meat hacker. And no conniving lawyer. You're all conspirators, evil conspirators. Taxes, shit. I've paid my taxes for the last 30 years when I could. I bet I paid your salary a hundred times over, buddy boy. And this is what I get after 30 years? Well, you have 30 days left. Well, you still got time, Lester. Take his offer over. Call me at the office. Tonight? Uh, yeah, I guess. Are we? You bet. You bringing Pauline? Yeah, I guess. Hey, uh, why don't you catch that window? This is self service bay. Hey, where's the party? What's up, buzzard? Hey, well, we were just heading over to get a uh, Coke and fries. Y'all want to go? It's nine in the morning. Hey, whatever trips your trigger, sweetheart. Come on, Liz, we'll meet you over there. You, uh, you buying? I don't know. You, you're the one with the bucks. Oh, you, you broke my heart. We'll see you over there. Should have done that a long time ago. You know, this place has been nothing but a hangout for bums and vagrants for years. Well, he's still got power to the old slaughterhouse. Yeah, I wonder if he still keeps his office up there. You know, I remember when the train used to come in here loaded with hogs. They'd run them down the chutes into the pens while they're loading the processed pork on the reefer cars up front. Yeah, it was just as if the railroad sold each one a round-trip ticket in <laughs> one day out the next. 
Yeah, old Lester ran a pretty tight ship, all right. Whatever happened to those underground coolers? I don't know. I ain't been down there in years. Uh, it's just a home for spiders and critters now. That's for damn sure. Ah, uh, hold over from the good old days. You know, 20 years ago, this whole area used to be one huge pen. Thousands of pigs, you could smell the damn things for a mile. You can still smell them. I'm glad that son of a bitch fired me. That's when I decided to go in business for myself. I wouldn't even be talking to the man if I didn't have this big contract coming up. I gotta have some extra space. And this place is perfect. That boy of his, he sure is a nod looking son of a gun. Would uh, bacon whip him with an ugly stick? Uh, no, actually, Les has always been pretty good to the boy. A little lightheaded, though. He had a younger boy. Whatever happened to him? No one seems to know for sure. His mama died giving birth to him. Well, if he looked anything like Buddy, probably so ugly the hogs ate him. Ah, shit! I refuse to bail you out this time. Damn it. Man Radio, and it's time now for our official weather report from our very own weather advisor. Here's Commander Matt. Hey, everybody, bad news. There's a storm approaching from the northwest. It could bring lots of rain tonight. Oh, what a bummer. But hey, what better reason to be indoors at the VFW Hall? Watch some of our local bands doing it to it. It's a big Cape Bat pig out. You ought to check it out. Hi, Dave. How you doing? What are you going to learn, Skip? I wasn't doing over 45. Yeah, but this is a 25-mile-an-hour zone. What's wrong with you, boy? You've already got two tickets in the last three months. Judge Parker's going to take away your license. I am sorry about last night. I promised to cool it, OK? No more speeding. Look, I'm not trying to hassle you kids. I was a kid, too, once. And I got my share of speeding tickets. But doggone it, now I'm on the other side of the fence. I got a wife and a couple of little screamers. And I'd like to see them enjoy life in one piece and not end up splattered all over the front end of your Jeep. I promise, OK, Dave? Honest. OK. Damn it, stay out of trouble. Yeah, that was close. You're lucky my dad didn't pull you over. in the morning and you're peeing out on french fries? Hey, has anybody heard from Kevin or Michelle? Not since we saw them last night. I didn't see his car when I uh, passed by his house on my way to pick you up. He's probably helping set up for the party. <laughs> Don't Michelle tease their party in already? Pay party animals, that's what we should be doing. How often do we get a four-day holiday anyway? Hell, we got tomorrow to sleep it off. I have a feeling you're gonna need more than tomorrow, pal. <laughs> Depends on how wild the party is. I doubt they'll let it get too crazy. Then we'll just have to move it somewhere else. Hey, what are you girls going to make us wear for this video thing? I don't know. I've been trying to think of something good, something different. I know. Why don't I strap a mattress to your back and we'll go naked? <laughs> cool it, Buzz. Why not? <laughs> we might win the booby prize. <laughs> Buzz, you're sick, OK? Maybe we can get some masks or something. Yeah, I bet Leo's got some. I got to go over there to get some video cassettes. Go check it out. Sounds good to me. Why not? Hey, I bet you're anxious. For what? To get a mask over that face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey, 
30 years, buddy boy, 30 years. And now they're skinning our hide. What's the matter with you, boy? Have you been up to some kind of prank? My God, boy, what have you done? Listen, boy, these people aren't to be feared. They are harmless. There are other heads I'd rather see roll than these kids. Murdoch, Sanford, and the sheriff. Those sons of bitches who were scheming to take our property. They're the ones that deserve this. burned out. How about old lady Baldwin's house? That always makes me shiver when I see it. I'm sure. Like we're going to go up to the old lady and ask her to use her house for a horror film. <laughs> How about the old pond? There's tons of crap to shoot around there. Yeah, he likes to feel at home. Hey, why don't we check out the old slaughterhouse? That's all boarded up now, isn't it? Dad said they were going to tear it down. It's worth a look. Hey, let's go. Do it. Do it. Twenty on the notice for me. Right. Well, she better. All right. Goodbye. Hello, this is Murdoch. Les, I was just sitting here reviewing the legal documents on your place. Good, Harold. Uh, listen, I want to apologize for my behavior this morning. I was upset. I know things happen. These are troubled times, Harold. Yep. But you know, I got your best interest at heart, Lester. You know, we've been friends a long time. A long time, Harold. I've been thinking about the offer. I've decided to work it out with Sanford, if you're willing to help. No, oh, I'm far away. Thanks, Harold. There's a few points I'd like to discuss with you before I make a deal with Sanford. Oh, I was hoping you could come out here I'd feel more comfortable. Well, let me check my schedule. What time? As soon as possible. All right, I'll be there around 1.30. I knew I could depend on you, Harold. Yeah, you can always tell me, Liz. Now, this is Harold Murdoch. I'm out with a client this afternoon. I'll be back around 3 o'clock. Please leave your name and number at the beep. KFAT, K-Y-L-E.
Band Radio weather forecast. Not looking too good. There's a chance of showers on the way. In fact, a big storm is coming. So get those umbrellas out and come to our Cape Bat Pickout. It looks empty. It looks creepy. 153, this is Central. 153, go ahead, Central. There's been a bad accident about 15 miles out on Highway 13. Sheriff Ford is on his way out there now, and he wants you to take over until further notice. Are you sure he doesn't need any help? Not at this point. Just keep an eye on things. Be advised that Eleanor Mitchell called. Gail was out last night with Kevin Matthews, and Kevin's parents haven't seen him either. Dave. Jan, I'm going to check something out. Notify me immediately if you get an update on them, OK? Blow this pop stand.
I've been acting like an old fool, Tom. I'm ready to make a deal. Harold's on his way. I know you're a busy man. Just come on out and we'll get it over with. Oh, what I said about 30% fat, I understand profit margin. Okay, I'll see you about five. How'd it go? Bad, real bad. I'll let you in on the details later. My stomach's upset. It must have been something I ate. Or that accident, maybe? Nerves, that's what it is. Nerves. Have you heard from Dave? About a half hour ago. I'll give him a call and let him know you're back. Hold on a minute. I'd like to talk to him.
My God, you've gone hog wild. I told you, son, Murdoch, Sanford, and the sheriff, they're our enemies, not these people. He's not the sheriff, just a deputy. It's okay, son, I know. Clean up this mess and put him with the others before Murdoch gets here. Maybe we can make good use of him. Glad you could come, Harold. No problem, Lester. Bring back memories? Yeah, I haven't been in this room in years. Let's put the padlock on the door. Eight years ago, Harold. Eight years. Boy, time flies, don't it? For some people. You know, maybe your arrangement with Sanford will be a new beginning for you, Lester. Where is Tom, anyway? I didn't see his car out there. He's waiting for you. You know, I didn't know Sheriff Borden was coming over. He's in here. What the hell is this, Lester? Some kind of prank? No, just the seat, Harold. Something you understand all too well. Wait just a minute, I Lester. have been waiting eight long years, Harold. Eight years you've been conspiring with others to steal all that I've worked and planned for. And you've managed to do it all through one of the most conniving methods known to civilized man. Taxes. You know, Borden and Sanford are right. You are crazy. Let me out of here, Lester. I have something to show you. Oh my God, man. God had nothing to do with this, Harold. I see you've met the bailiff. Better not move, Harold. Remember, buddy, can split the head off a chicken on the run at 20 feet. Not exactly a jury of your peers, but then buddy has never been very discriminating. Listen to me, Lester. It's, it's not too late. I can still help you. Help me? I'm not the one on trial here. I can help you cover things up. Deception. You see what I mean, Harold? You've been deceiving people for years. I haven't screwed you in 30 years, Lester. Why don't we ask the jury what they think? Damn it, Lester. Let me out of here. Honorable men and the woman of the jury, you've heard Mr. Murdoch's story. If you believe this man to be lying, please signify by raising a hand. I guess there's only one dissenting vote, Harold. God damn it, Lester, let me out of here. Say your prayers, Harold. You won't feel a thing. We do things kosher. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty lucky. About what? About you. You always treat me so good. You were so gentle. Like Kevin or Buzz. Hey, those are great guys, you know. It's, it's just everyone's different. Yeah, well, Kevin attacks every girl he's with. Well, that's Kevin's style. Well, I like yours.
two kids missing, one deputy on vacation, one I can't find, and a town full of kids loaded for bear tonight. Jim, I'm going to check around and see if I can come up with something on Dave. Why don't you try the Lakeside Hotel? He's been stopping there for lunch lately. Oh, really? How long has this been going on? Last couple months. Keep in touch. Sheriff, don't tell him I told you. You told me that last storm destroyed about 20% of his crop. Lord knows what this one's gonna do. What's up, Sheriff? Herb? Ernie? You haven't seen my deputy Dave today, have you? No, he's been coming in here for lunch lately. Didn't show today, though. Now he's been missing since this morning, and he doesn't answer his car radio. So can you help me out here? Ernie, you seen Dave Thomas today? Yeah, buddy. Anybody here seen Dave Thomas today? I saw him this morning, Sheriff. You are? Sally Jean Duncan. I work over at the cafe. Miss Duncan, when was the last time you saw Deputy Thomas? This morning. Early this morning. Trying to impress me? 
salad, Mom? Mm, no, it's okay. I'll take over. Go get ready for the party. Thanks. Instant cardboard. Uh, I'll be upstairs <laughs> if you need me. Okay. Uh, honey, you're home early. Did you have an easy day? Hardly. Ooh, my favorite. No, sweetheart, I won't be home for dinner tonight. Burns on vacation, Dave's missing, and Jan's minding the store. I know. What is this about Dave missing? I don't know. Nobody's seen him since this morning. You know, I talked to Kevin Matthews' mother today. She hasn't seen him since last night. She's petrified. You know, I think I'm going to go over there tonight. I put out an APB in the other counties for Kevin and the Mitchell girl. I hope it's nothing serious. Hopefully they just eloped. Uh, that's Skip. They're going to the Cape Hat dance. The whole town is. Hi, Skip. Hi, Mrs. Borden. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Skip. Any uh, word on Kevin? Nothing yet. Now, you two take it easy tonight. I don't want any shenanigans. We'll be good. Bye, Pop. Good. Honey, I'll bring dinner by the office. Thanks a lot. You know, your dad's really concerned about Dave missing. He's probably out with that uh, Sally Jean. It's not nice. Well, maybe it's true. You know, you ought to say something to him about that. Still an effective method of getting rid of waste. Remember when we processed maybe 50, 60,000 head a year? Not bad for human muscle and sharp knives. Uh, well, it's a museum piece now.
Mind and want to hang around that dirty, smelly old slaughterhouse at night. If that place was scary enough during the day, I wouldn't want to be there at night. Oh, are you scared? I think you're just scared. Yeah. If you guys are so macho, why don't you go out there? Yeah, put your money where your mouth is. Okay. Ten bucks. So you won't last an hour out there. Yeah, alone. Make it worth my while. Make it 20. They've never seen a 20, Liz. <laughs> I'll toss in ten. Okay. Twenty bucks says you won't last an hour in that old place. You're on. We should have held out for forty bucks because of the storm, Annie. Jan, give Dave's wife a call and see if he's reported home. Jan, don't get her alarmed. Something crazy is going on here. Let's go back to the party. This is really dumb. And lose a chance of a lifetime? Show up these guys and make 20 bucks doing it. Oh, that's what I like, spirit. Now, if you girls want us to come pick you up, just signal with this. We will be down the road sipping a few cool ones. Uh -huh. See you, girls. Bye. An hour. Or less. I think you go first. 
No way, it's your 20 bucks. What do you say we split it and we'll go together? Deal. Fifty-two to Central. This is Central. Patch me through to the Medford County Sheriff's Department. Annie, we should have held out for forty bucks. Look at this place. Yeah, straight out of good housekeeping, huh? I knew it. I got an idea. I'm going to find a way out and sneak around behind these guys. Oh, Liz, I really think it'd be better if we stuck together here. No, you stay here and act as bait. I'm going to get around behind and scare the hell out of them. This way. See if you can't find some place to sneak in. Well, how about the front door? No, 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 no. That's too obvious. We gotta be sneaky about this. Oh man, this is gonna be great.
Skip. Skip, you nearly scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I've got an emergency over here, Al. Can I get some help from your county? You bet, Fred. We'll get them right out there to you. Thanks, Al. I may need them for the next couple of days. No sweat. We'll manage. Uh, speaking of missing persons, you haven't seen Tom Sanford over there, have you? Not since this morning. And, uh, he was headed back toward his plant. His old lady's upset because he hasn't been home yet. Listen, we'll get those men right out to you. Keep me posted. Thanks, Al. Car 152 to Central. Go ahead, Sheriff. Jan, any word on Murdoch? Mrs. Murdoch called his office again, but his answering machine's on and it says the same thing, that he's out with a client and he'll return about three. Sanford. Murdoch. Out with a client. Murdoch out with Sanford. Jan, let me know the minute you hear anything about Murdoch. I'm gonna play a hunch. <laughs> Believe me, your friends never felt a thing. A large price to pay for trespassing. And easy on her, son. We don't want to hurt her yet. What's your name, miss? <laughs> Borden? Lizzie Borden? Well, I'll be a sucking you. The sheriff's daughter? Lizzie Borden? I you know this is almost better than having your old man here. His buddy something to play with besides himself. <laughs> Tender as a suckling pig. Used to get a lot of call for suckling. Folks used to have big pig roasts every summer. Lots of them. Ah, 
times have changed. <laughs> These knives, each one has its own purpose. Boning, carving, slicing. This one's specially made for skin off the hide. I can skin the hide off a hog in 30 seconds without jiggling one ounce of fat. <laughs> Don't scare the poor thing, boy. Take off that damn mask. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Most folks prefer not to think how their steaks and chops are produced. Uh, they just pick them up all wrapped in plastic and neat little disposable trays and never give it a thought. People think butchering is a crass, vile trade. But they don't realize that a good meat cutter must have the knowledge of anatomy and the skilled hands of a surgeon. Hmm? Delicate, but not much meat. Good for soup. <laughs> Did you know that one of the most sensitive parts of the human body is the fingertip? It's just a tiny cut on the fingertip is more painful than a slice across the belly, inch for inch. to know the beast you're going to guard. <laughs> Little girl, I bet I could skin you out in 90 seconds flat and dress you out in less than three minutes. <laughs> Recognize this one, little girl? Watch closely and you'll see what I'm gonna do to you. Get the hell out of here. 